when I can and can't see you. Being kept in the dark is the perfect way, is the perfect way to stage manage the tabloid press. What you don't need to do is come pouring out of a car with everything on display, arm in arm, kissing each other, because then it's all over. The game is up, everybody knows what's happening, front page of the Daily Mirror, thanks a lot, we all get on with the rest of our lives. Was it a game, wasn't it a game? No, it actually did see genuinely the what 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 it is and they're still stuck together and i'm sure there's you know i'm, I'm sure lad books have bets on them you know they'll split up by christmas so i wish them luck i think they'll actually do it That's at least the later. on leaving the jungle katie and peter were kept hidden from public gaze in a posh london hotel up here is good for us too because i do a lot of writing up here on my computer and that songwriting that is and kate does a lot of practice in her vocals. It's kind of fun. It's a bit of a musical place here, eh? Very musical. Yes. Especially you... when it turns night time. Yeah, because we have music playing now. And that's when I practice mm. my vocals, if you know what I mean. No more filth. It's two weeks since Peter and Katie left the jungle. The re-release of Mysterious Girl has stunned everyone, including Peter, by hitting the number one slot. And he's well on his way back to stardom. Number one award we present for special number ones from the Guinness Book of British Hit Singles. And we've got a book for you there as well, wow. your name and your chart record. Really? So, uh, congratulations. Awesome, Thanks very and, uh, much. Hope it, all goes well. it was the 973rd UK number one, and more awards followed. How awesome is that, eh? City UK, you know, it's, um, I guess in seven years things have changed because you didn't used to get presented with number one awards and stuff, but, you know, with yesterday with the um, with British hit singles and stuff, you know, giving me the disc and then today City UK giving this. It's very difficult to come back. And he's done it, and I really, really feel pleased for him. I mean, do you know what? He's a much nicer guy second time around, and I remember having a conversation when he came back, and he just said, I never appreciated it the first time around. I'm going to do so this time. Uh, give me, give me your thing, so I can sign go. it. What do you see? I feel bad doing this. I know what we have to go. And when I want them to know that I feel bad eventually. Thanks for being nice and that and coming to see me. Sorry, we've got to go, guys. We need to close the door. Because we've got to go to a meeting and that. The highlight of the number one week is a live appearance on Top of the Pops and Pete's reunited with Bub Larance, the rapper. How are you guys doing out there, man? <laughs> this is Bubs right here, the fugitive. They found me. I'm here, I'm prison. After a nationwide search, Bubbler's been found and is probably the hippest employee the Carphone Warehouse has ever had. I said tonight is your lucky night. This is a very proud moment, very special moment. Absolutely. Probably myself, yep. number one top of the pops. While Peter's at the BBC, he gets the opportunity to thank the person whose radio show backed the re-release, Radio 1 DJ Chris Moyles. How are you? I know, what a moment, really, eh? Right? How good is Chris, mate? I always relate it to coming out of the jungle, I went into an even bigger jungle. Because what I'm in now, it is, it's, it's this amazing, like, whirlwind, roller coaster, crazy life. I guess, as corny and as cheesy as it sounds, it is insane here. Coming up, what really happened to Peter in his break from fame and a very unofficial photo shoot. The photo of Peter Andre and Katie Price's secret love affair is driving the tabloids and the public wild. The frenzy of speculation has helped to drive Peter back to the top of the charts again. But how much longer will his comeback last? This is what makes it all worthwhile for me, you see. This is why I love it. While everyone is left guessing about the true nature of their relationship, Peter joins Katie on a photo shoot in Brighton. The polo boys will look shit at first because I'm not warmed up. She knows how to play the camera, doesn't she? I remember this comment, wait, in the jungle. Here we go, I'll Yeah, I know what you mean, I know what you mean. Charlie, yeah, yeah. He's such a dick. Oh, please. Oh, 
she was starting to become everything I wanted in a person. Sorry, it's just um, wiping off the dust on her shirt. She's got quite a lot of... Without it being sexual, and yet she's the most fanciable woman and the most sexually sought after woman. And I knew eventually I would be unbelievably sexually attracted to her, but it was so much more than that. So quick, so instant. Just so you know, I'm here. I wanted to be close to my cave. Yeah, put the jeans on. Offer her support for today. Um, I don't really normally get involved in other people's work, and I don't normally watch like the whole fat issue because I like her to do her work and not feel uncomfortable. But I, I wanted to be here and lend as much support as I can. What you say to that girl? I love him. Absolutely love him. Still got the uppers. I'm coming up. It's May, and our lovebirds have come clean about their relationship in an exclusive photo shoot in Cyprus for OK Magazine. It's an important step in Peter's career. He's got another single and a tour on the way, and the OK shoot is good for his profile. That's lovely. That's lovely. Wait, <laughs> but never ones to take themselves too seriously, Katie and Peter make use of the villa's living room to brush up on some dance moves. <laughs> Pete also tries to compose another number one. Although Katie, who likes to be the centre of attention, is less than impressed. Hey, you can't play the piano. What a cow. Go on, prove it. Kate, yeah. can you let someone else have their moment? Oh, you want your moment? You have it all the time, you've had it for the past two weeks. This is normal. Just play. I'll play later, because she does me head in. Always has to flip in. I can't do anything without... Like Peter and Katie never fall out for long. Soon they're getting into the spirit of the shoot with a bit of private photography. Talk about exposure. What's the photo of Pete? My cock. When was this taken? Two nights ago. Oh, yeah. I'd show, but they wouldn't show it on cam, would they? They wouldn't show it on film. But I'll tell you what... Depends if it's a wreck or not. Oh, it is. Okay. It so dispels my acorn room and I'm so happy about it. I'll let you all have a look if you want. It's like, <laughs> I don't fucking want to look at your pocket. Cyprus is home ground for Peter and a chance for him to catch up with a life he's only just left behind. I'm very proud of Peter for his comeback in his career. I think he's done extremely well and I knew deep down he would have his comeback. We do miss him at the gym right now and in the beauty as well. Uh, he puts spice into everyone's life, as we all know this. In his time away from the charts, Pete bought and ran this gym with his family. Basically, ever since Peter left, the uh, gym's changed a little bit. A lot of the people coming here beforehand were getting trained by Peter and myself, so now it's completely changed. Peter's doing his thing over in England, so I've taken over the gym. All this stuff is like having your own personal trainer. You can do things to put on more muscle, you can do things to lose weight for explosive strength, which I'll show you one of these machines in a second. Um, this is our ab, ab machine, ab area, so to speak, and uh, we do a lot. What we try and tell people is to work on the lower back and the abdominals, a lot of side crunches, so they do the whole area, not just one area. Ah, yes, Peter's six-pack who can forget it. Early in his career it was the gimmick that set him apart and did as much as his music to make him a star. I'd been training so hard at the gym and I I wanted so much for that image to be shown. Um, I'd seen Bruce Lee on TV, I'd seen Jean-Claude Van Damme and I'd seen that guys liked them and girls liked them and I thought why? It's obviously because girls want to be with them, guys want to be like them. So I looked at video clips and I thought, well, nobody's doing it in video clips. So when I got signed up, it was an image I thought would work, which, touch wood, it did. Yeah, 
Then it got to a stage where I was known image wise for the body, that's what they were saying. So of course now I had to maintain. So I used to stress at photo shoots, I had to make sure that all the lighting was better. And you get people saying, Oh, don't look as good as you did in that video, or you know, you've got to make sure you keep eating this so you don't look like that. You've got so many different people talking to you, you get caught up in the hype, so to speak. It was a look that made him irresistible to girls, and even some celebrity fans couldn't get enough of him. I remember Paula Yates sort of always saying, you know, every morning she had a picture of Peter Andre on the fridge, and everybody just looked at it. That was what got through the day, and, and it was that sort of appeal of, yeah, God, he's good looking. God, he's, you know, he's a fit guy. And he obviously worked out and, and was that. Um, but that doesn't last. You know, you, you, you've got to be a bit more than looks. So in 1998, um, I'd actually been going for over 10 years um, because even though I got signed up in 98, uh, 88, I started recording and releasing songs in Australia in 1990. So by the time I got to 98 and I'd had, you know, thankfully I'd had a lot of success in Australia and England and, and Asia and all those places, I just wanted to take a bit of time out. Why are you running away from my I said to Claire, I want to leave now, just for a few months. Um, of course, a few months, I wasn't supposed to go for a few years. Um, I went back to Australia. We had a family business. Me and my dad owned a, a beach resort out there, and um, mum and dad were running it, so I went back to help out. The break from fame did not bring the peace that Peter hoped for. In fact, it led to a mental collapse, as he reveals for the first time to our cameras on a noisy flight to yet another personal appearance. Anyway, when I went back to Australia, I thought I was at, I was starting to get really bad headaches, really, really bad headaches, like daily, 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 they were getting worse and stuff, so I thought, okay, you know, maybe I'll go see a doctor for that. But when I got back to the, to the family business and I was helping out my dad, one night I was there by myself and I just, I just broke down into really bad headaches. I started shaking, my heart started beating fast, and I started freaking out, freaking out. And, um, and I got scared and I got taken to the hospital and they said, oh, it's just a, it's a panic attack. Well, I didn't know what a panic attack was, so it was the first time in my life I'd experienced it. But from that night on, everything had changed, you know. Um, the doctor said I had so much stress, so much built up, and something from the past had been triggering me off to get me. So anyway, as it turned out, uh, I had a, a very, very, very severe breakdown at a time when I thought I was at peace with myself. It was really bad. I, um, Mum and Dad didn't know, but I ended up spending two weeks in the new hospital. All of a sudden I was like, oh my God, what have I done? I've been gone too long. I hit rock bottom, I, you know, there's things I will talk about, I'm sure, in a book one day. I could tell you a million stories about what I went through. And you wouldn't believe how it was Jekyll and Hyde. I saw, I was on both sides of the fence and I saw things really at face value. I saw my friends that disappeared. I saw a lot of things. I saw money that slipped through my hands and it was gone. And anyway, I went through a really bad stage for about six months. Then I decided to move to New York because... There was a lot of writers out there and I wanted to go out there, I paid my own way, went and met with all these writers and I just started writing song after song after song. One day I would survive without you standing by my side every night, every day. It was this love of music that restored Peter's Aussie optimism. Moving back to Cyprus with his family, Peter had more or less turned his back on fame. But then came the call of the jungle, and the encounter with a woman that was to change his life and fire up his creativity again. So, guys, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank corner. you very much. I knew it because you've done what you've done on the night like that. It's a bit obvious, isn't it? Thank you. 
I'm happy because there's no pricks on it. The only prick I've got to worry about is that. Exactly. Like right, your stuff. <laughs> Back home after the photo shoot in Cyprus, Peter and Katie are out of the closet. Peter's spending more and more time at Katie's Sussex mansion and reflecting on the twists of fate that have found him topping the charts and dating the UK's top glamour model. Try and figure this. I go on a show that all I'm hoping to do is just get by on, just get through it without being evicted first. Never in a million years think of winning it or be the last man standing or anything end up falling for somebody that I totally did not expect to fall for, right? And then when I came out, of course I was thrilled that I got offered a recording deal and all that, but I was thrilled that I, I, w I could have a personal life. That was what was more exciting for me at that point. Um, so I went into the whole industry thinking, well, look, I know how fickle it is and I know how it can come and go just like that. And I do write my own songs, so I can always write. Whether they like the choice of singles I release or not, I can always write. If it all fell tomorrow, or all ended tomorrow, there's no way it's failure. I'm, I feel unbelievable. Yes, I'm here. Good. I need you close. That's all I wanted while I was cooking, but... But what? I didn't have you. Yeah, tonight. No, you're not having nothing for that. Why? Because I'm still upset. Oh, okay. But what about when you want? Well... That is selfish. When I want, I can have it any time, Pete. Pete. <laughs> you like that, don't you? Mm. Peter Andre's unexpected comeback is in full swing, and this time he's loving every minute of it. He's making personal appearances in nightclubs and shopping centres, and the crowds are bigger than he's seen for years. One record signing in Manchester attracted 6,000 people of all ages, beating the previous best set by some couple called Beckham. Wow! wow. I've got to tell you something, I got really emotional back then. Still to come, we're on location for the next big step in Pete's career, and he ponders the nature of true love. They should just call it bollocks. It's spring 2004, and Peter Andre is making the very most of his rediscovered popularity. This my little mate from years ago, yeah. eight years ago. That looked absolutely amazing. I couldn't really hear what I was doing, but they were so good, that crowd. Bloody hell. <laughs> that was amazing. Hey, oh, in the mirror you go. When she can, girlfriend Katie Price joins him to support her pop idol. Fucking love you so much. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Hey guys, what? Who am I? For six months, Peter worked his well-toned butt off, keeping an incredible 212 appointments around the country and getting deafened by enthusiastic fans. Peter hasn't forgotten how to work a crowd. And as if this wasn't enough, he's got video and photo shoots for his next single, plus a new album to record. Cutfather and Joe are top music producers, based in Denmark, and are working with Peter on a song that feels very personal. 